if you double the value of each and every resistance then the equivalent resistance will double the equivalent is 3 ohm here the equivalent is 6 ohm similarly if i half if i half the value of each and every resistance in a given circuit then the equivalent resistance will also half this is very important thing हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आज के इस सेशन में हम करंट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी के ऊपर एक क्वेश्चन करेंगे जिसमें आपके बहुत सारे कॉन्सेप्ट्स क्लियर होने वाले हैं आइए देखते हैं हमारा आज का क्वेश्चन इन द डायग्राम शोन दिस इज द डायग्राम द नंबर ऑफ सक्सेसिवली एम्बेडेड इक्विलेटरल ट्रायंगल्स टेंड्स टू इन्फिनिटी दिस इज एन इक्विलेटरल ट्रायंगल इन साइड दैट ट्रायंगल देर इज अनदर इक्विलेटरल ट्रायंगल side length of this triangle is half the side length of original first triangle and then inside this second triangle there is again an equilateral triangle inside that triangle there is another equilateral triangle so on so forth there are infinite number of such embedded equilateral triangles every triangle has its side length half the preceding larger triangle all triangles are made of same uniform wire having resistance lambda per meter length all these triangles are made of same wire each uh, and the wire has a resistance of lambda ohm per meter length side length of the outermost triangle is a the side length of this outermost triangle is a find the equivalent resistance between the points a and b you have to find the equivalent resistance between a and b side length of the outermost triangle is a here there should be a full stop here i'm sorry and this is capital f okay so find the equivalent resistance between points a and b this is your question i am getting out of the screen so that you can capture the question if you want to and give it a try ah uh, okay so this is the circuit that has been given to us and there are two key aspects that you must note if you want to solve this problem what are those two key concepts let us first try to understand them the first one is uh if we assume that equivalent resistance between a and b is r not and if we remove the outer triangle then the resistance of the remaining network about two vertices like r and q will be r not by 2 what am i saying i am saying that if you assume that there is a battery connected over here and the resistance faced by the battery is r not that means equivalent resistance of this given circuit across points a and b is r not let us assume that the r not is the number that we are supposed to find then what i am saying is suppose you remove this outer triangle just remove it completely just remove it completely and think that the circuit is now r q p this point is p r q p and the triangles which are inside this particular triangle so you go on embedding triangles like this so the outermost triangle has been removed if i do if i do that then equivalent resistance between these two points these two points if i connect a battery here then this battery will face a resistance that will be equal to r not by 2 what i intend to say is actually true for any circuit let me draw a simple circuit okay let me draw a simple circuit let us say there are two resistances 1 ohm and 2 ohm you can easily calculate the equivalent resistance it is 3 ohm now if i double if i double each and every resistance in a circuit that means if i double this resistance to 2 ohm and i double the other resistance to 4 ohm if you double the resistances given in a particular circuit then the equivalent resistance just doubles if you double the value of each and every resistance then the equivalent resistance will double the equivalent is 3 ohm here the equivalent is 6 ohm similarly if i half if i half the value of each and every resistance in a given circuit then the equivalent resistance will also half this is very important thing if you triple the value of each resistance in a given circuit then the equivalent resistance will become three times this is true for any circuit any complex circuit right so if you get this concept then you must understand that if the equivalent between a and b is r not and if i just remove this outer triangle 
then the circuit basically remains same because there are in finite number of embedded triangles. But what is happening if resistance of this is R, then resistance of this side is uh, if resistance of this side is R, then resistance of this side or this side is R by 2. What it means? Uh, if I show a circuit like this to a student and tell him that this resistance is 1 ohm, this is 1 ohm, then he will understand that this is half ohm, this is half ohm, this is half, half, half and this is 1 by 4 ohm, 1 by 4 ohm, so on and so forth because uh, resistance is proportional to length of the wire and length of the wire is getting halved in each successive triangle. So, if I remove the outermost triangle, we are left with a circuit which looks like this only, but length of this side is half the length of this side. So, if resistance is 1 ohm here, then it will be half ohm here. If resistance of this side is half ohm, then resistance of this side will be 1 by 4 ohm. So, actually these two circuits are same and there is one and only one difference. Here value of resistance is 1 ohm, then here it is half ohm. If here the value of resistance is half ohm, then here it is 1 by 4 ohm. If here the value of resistance is 1 by 4 ohm, then here it is 1 by 8 ohm, so on and so forth. So, actually the circuits are same because there are infinite number of triangles, but value of resistance in this particular circuit uh, is exactly half of the corresponding resistance in this particular circuit. So, in a way, if you just remove this triangle, what you have done is you have created another circuit which is similar, but having values of resistance is halved. Right. So, if equivalent of this is R0, then obviously equivalent of this across R and Q will be R0 by 2. So, this is the first key thing that you need to understand if you wish to solve this uh, problem. The next important thing that we need to understand is junction at point P can be opened. This junction can be opened. This is another key important thing that you need to understand uh, and I assume that many of you have already done problems in which uh, this concept is used. In fact, if you are watching my lectures, uh, series of lectures on current electricity, I have considered such examples uh, of false junction. Uh, circuits where if junction is removed, it actually makes no difference. I will explain it in short here also. Suppose again assume that we connect a battery uh, across A and B, right. Now, the circuit is basically symmetrical whether you look at it from the, this side A or you look at it from this side B, it appears exactly identical. So, if I naught is the current entering through A into the circuit, then same current I is getting out of the circuit at point B, is not it? Suppose I is the current entering into the circuit at point A, this I will get divided into two parts. I do not know what in exactly in what ratio. Let me assume that here the current becomes a small i. Okay. So, capital I minus a small i will go this way. Very good. Now, looking at the circuit from this side, I can say that current here will also be small i and current here will be i minus i. How can I say that? Because from this side, and from this side, the circuit is exactly same. There is absolutely no difference. So, if there is a 2 ampere current in this resistance, then there will be 2 ampere current in this resistance as well. If there is 3 ampere current here, then there is going to be a 3 ampere current here also. Um, actually, positive charges are flowing like this. That is how uh, we consider the flow of current. Positive charges are entering into the circuit from this side and you can say that positive charges are coming out or reverse it, you can say that negative charge, same quantity of negative charge is entering into the circuit from this side. So, if you consider it like this that positive charges are entering from this terminal and negative charges are entering from this terminal, then it becomes absolutely clear. So, positive 5 coulomb charge enters, 2 coulomb goes this way, 3 coulomb goes this way. This is just an example, 5, 2 and 3 are just an example. So, negative 5 coulomb enters from here. So, obviously, negative 2 coulomb will go there and negative 3 coulomb will go there because of symmetry. So, from this we can understand that current here is I and here also it is I. Interestingly, if I assume that uh, current here is, I am just writing it 
I2, current here is I2, then please try to understand from the same logic, current here will also be I2. Because again, these two resistances are symmetrically located, whether you look at it from side A or side B. Uh, when you look, it, look at it from side A, this resistance is in similar position uh, as this one when you look at it from the side B. So, if this current is I2, then here also current will be I2. Now, look at this particular junction, what is happening here? A current I2 that is flowing here is just passing like this and a current I that is going like this is just passing like this. So, if I open this junction at this point, will it make any difference? If I just draw this circuit like this, if I draw the circuit like this opening this junction, then current I2 remains in this path, current I remains in this path. So, actually it makes no difference to the circuit if I open that particular junction at point P and this is the second important concept that we need to understand in order to be able to solve this problem. Now, let us solve this problem. Uh, I am assuming, uh, okay, it is given that lambda is the uh, resistance per meter length. So, if this side length is A by 2, resistance of this side or this side or this side or this segment or this segment will be lambda times A by 2, right? So, I am calling that lambda times A by 2 as R. I am representing that by symbol R. Now, this is the given circuit. This resistance is R, this is R, this is R and I hope you all understand that this will be R by 2, R by 2, R by 2, R by 2, R by 2. This will be R by 4, R by 4, R by 4, so on and so forth. So, first thing that I have done is I have opened the junction at point P because it is not going to make any difference to the circuit actually. So, this circuit can be redrawn like this. Actually, there is no difference. Okay. Now, uh, because, because I am saying that, because I am saying that, if you remove this outer triangle, if you remove this outer triangle, then equivalent resistance of this part, this has been removed, this has been opened. Okay. So, equivalent resistance of this part, just imagine that outer triangle has been removed. Now, equivalent resistance between R and Q for this uh, remaining circuit will obviously be equal to R naught by 2. If the equivalent of the entire circuit between point A and B is R naught and if you remove the outer triangle, then the equivalent resistance of this part across R and Q will be R naught by 2 as I explained it to you in the first required concept. So, now I, I will use uh, this to get the final answer. So, I have opened this, now I have drawn the circuit, um, you can see yourself that between A and B, the resistance is 2R basically, this is R and this is R, so it is 2R, this is R, 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 this is R and between R and Q, I have included a resistance R naught by 2. This has been detached, this is very important. If you are not able to detach it from here, then I cannot say actually that equivalent resistance between A and B will be double the equivalent resistance between R and Q. But if it is detached and the outer triangle has been removed, then the circuit is exactly same and between R and Q, the resistance of this whole thing, this whole inside thing can be replaced by a single resistance of value R naught by 2. So, this is R naught by 2, this is uh, R, this is R, this is R, this is R, this is R. What is R naught? R naught is the required equivalent resistance. Now, you can just simplify it, it is nothing but series parallel grouping of resistance. So, this R and R becomes 2R in series. Now, you combine this with this one in parallel, this gives you this value of resistance. This R has been left as it is, this R has been left as it is, this 2R has been left as it is. Now, these are three resistances in series. So, basically R plus R 2R, 2R plus this and this whole thing is in parallel with 2R. If I do all those calculations, this is what you will get. This is the equivalent and equivalent we have assumed it to be R naught. Now, you just need to simplify this circuit and uh, simplify this equation and it will become a quadratic equation in R naught and solution of this quadratic equation will give you the value of R naught. R is a known number, right? R is 
lambda a by 2. So, you get the value of R naught. I hope all of you have understood this. If you have understood this, I am giving you a question which you can do on your own. This is a rather simple question. If you have understood this one, then the next one is going to be really easy for most of you. Please try it yourself. This is again an infinite ladder network and uh, find the current in this particular resistance. This is the question. This is a 20 volt battery, 1 ohm, 2 ohm, half ohm, 1 ohm, 1 by 4 ohm, 1 by 2 ohm, 1 by 8 ohm, 1 by 4 ohm, so on and so forth. And the circuit goes up to infinity. You have to find current in this particular 2 ohm resistance. I am getting out of the frame. You can capture the question and give it a try. Uh, students, I hope you have enjoyed this session. If you have really liked it, please, please do me a favor by liking this video and if possible, please share it with your friends. That is my only motivation. Uh, more the subscribers, uh, more will I get motivated to keep you feeding with such videos. Thank you.